Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sara van Grenen, aka Mr. VG, and oh, this is going to be an awesome video. I am so very excited about this for many different reasons. But remember, we are now going and we are digging deep into trigonometry. This video specifically is going to go about question. We are going to discuss question 5.3. And the amazing approach to questions like this, where they give you sine of 36 degrees equal to root 1 minus p squared. And they say without using a calculator, determine each of the following in terms of p. I want you to try this sum yourself. Hit, or, well, first hit the pause button, try it yourself, then come back and watch the rest of the video. Now we are going to, I'm going to give you some extra sums that I want you to actually attempt also by using this information, but that will come in about three or four slides from now. So let's start by you doing the sum for me. When I look at a sum like this, I'm not just going to answer it, I'm going to help you analyze it because this is the most important thing is analysis, analysis. So when I look at this, it tells me given that sin 36 degrees is equal to one root one minus p squared. First of all, I'm going to look at the 36 and I'm going to look at all the options. So the first option is the 54, which again is co-functions, 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 co-functions. Next, the next um, angle or size of angle I'm going to look at is 72 degrees, okay? Why 72 degrees? You'll find out now. The next one that I love to look at is 66 degrees, then 24 and 9. Where on earth do I get these random, seemingly random values from? Well, let's have a look. The 54 is co-functions. The 72 degrees is actually a double angle, or 2 times 36. 36. You see, I'm constantly trying to get back to 36. Then I've got compound angles, but not just any compound angles. 30 plus 36. I wish I could do that lisps thing with, a, what do you call it, that whistle when you do the all go 36. I can't do that, sorry. Every time I'm trying to get back to 36, I'm trying, but I'm not getting it right. My apologies. <laughs> I'm having fun. What about the 24? Hmm. What about 60 minus 36? What about 9? Well, that's 45 minus 36, okay? Every time, 36, 36. Why do I bring in 45 and 60 and 30? They're special angles. I know everything about them. That's why I bring them in. Now, you can also look at half angles, but mm, I'm not going to look at that at this moment. Maybe a bit later on in the video. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Stay tuned, stay tuned. But then, if I look at the sum, before I actually do anything, I love to draw my sketch. Okay, so how does the sketch look? Well, for sin 36, which is root 1 minus p squared, I'm always going to change it into a fraction by putting it over 1. Why do I want to do that? Because then I can draw a triangle where I've got the opposite and the hypotenuse, where I've got a, a ratio between my opposite and my hypotenuse. In this case, my opposite is root 1 minus p squared, and my hypotenuse is 1. Just be careful, that's not the actual lengths, that's just the ratio between them, okay? But I'm, I'm getting too technical here, okay? I'm getting very technical here. But I have a missing side. So I'm going to go and work with Pythagoras. Substituting the values in for y and for r. 
and now I'm just going to solve x. So x squared is 1 plus p squared minus 1. So x squared is equal to p squared. If I take the square root, then x is positive or negative p. But because this is 36 degrees, x is positive p. Why? Well, if I, drew, if I wanted to draw a Cartesian plane, it's going to be on the positive x side. That's just the reason why, okay? Now, if it was on the negative side, I would have used negatives, but not for today. Let's now actually look at the question. Now, the question asked you for 36 degrees, but I'm going to put that 54 degrees in there. Because cofunctions, they've got to add up to 90 degrees. I like it. So even in the coming sums, in the upcoming sums, I could answer anything about 54 degrees if I wanted to. But let's get into the actual question. Tan of 36. If I look at tan of 36, I am going to draw my I've got my triangle, my information there. And this is awesome because the 36 is already there. But I'm just going to write out the same block that I had in the previous video with the steps because those steps are still there. They stole the first two steps I'm going to follow. First of all, is my angle between 0 and 360? Yes. Is my angle between 0 to 90? Yes. Now, I'm just going to go opposite over adjacent. Root 1 minus P squared over P. Boom. Simple. Straightforward. I know I'm doing a lot of analysis for two marks, but when, in the upcoming sums, you'll see why I do it. Let's look at cos 108. First question is it between 0 and 360? Yes, but it's not between 0 and 90. In the second quadrant, I now have negative cos 72. When I've got 72 degrees, again, I'm going to open up my mind as wide as I can at this moment and look at all the possible possibilities. I can look at 18 degrees. I can look at 36 times 2, 60 plus 12, 45 times, or times, oh my goodness, plus 27. Or I can look at 30 plus 42. Which one has an actual 36 in it? Well, 36 times 2. So this means I can use negative cos 2 times 36. I put it in a block in a little box for my students so they kind of know that in that box I can put anything. So cos 2 times block. Now I can choose with a block, okay, as alpha or any one of my three options. I'm going to choose the option, the middle one, the 2 cos squared block. Why? Because cos of 36 is p over 1. It is a, a simple and straightforward one. But what if you want to choose the other ones? Well, go for it. Go for it. I'm not going to stop you. It's just going to take you longer. So I'm going to go 2 cos squared block minus 1. Now, I don't want to work with cos squared blocks. So I'm going to move that square just to outside the bracket and I'm going to say well cos 36 is okay let me just make a bit of space is p so multi multiplying that negative in just gives me negative 2p squared plus 1 as simple and straightforward as this but I'm now going to give you a beautiful treat. I, I looked at this sum and I said, oh man, I can't do all of this analysis if I'm not going to have more fun. So I'm going to tell you, 
hit the pause button again and try these extra problems yourself. And when you've done them, hit the play button and I'm going to then go through it with you on the video. Ladies and gents, let's look at the first one. Sine of 369. Remember, you've got your steps. First of all, angle between 0 and 360. Now I've got to subtract 360. I end up with sine of 9 degrees. Now what? Remember, write out all the options. I can have 81, 69 minus 60. 45 minus 36 or 39 minus 30 degrees or I could have 2 times 44,5 but which one has a 36 in it? Well that middle one 45 minus 36 so I'm going to use that sine 45 minus 36 look how easy it is when you write out all the options so I'm going to expand by going sine cos, cos sin, the 45 and then your 36 with the same sign in the middle. Uh, then I can go and I substitute my special angles. Then for the 36, well, I remember I've got that beautiful triangle there. So I can calculate cos of 36 in terms of P. So that's just P. And sine 36 as root 1 minus P squared. Just to make it look nice for the examiner, I can just write it over a single fraction or in a single fraction form. That's just to make it look beautiful. But for my students, I would actually give them full marks if they leave it like that. Because I know some of them would mess up in trying to simplify it. Okay? Let's look at the second question. The second question. Cos of negative 342. Hmm. Let's look at my steps. It, my arm um, is my angle between 0 and 360. Nope. So I've got it. At 360, which now leads me towards 18. Let's look at all the options. Well, in this case, I'm sitting with a bit of an oopsie there. Okay, I'm sitting with a bit of an oopsie there. Ah, I've got a half times 36. I don't like that. Okay, I don't like that. So what I'm actually going to do is I am going to look at manipulating this thing. But let me just think about what are we really wanting to do. And what I really want to do is I want to show you this as a way of just again broadening your horizons if i have an angle like uh, that's a half of another angle i can actually use the cos double angle identity whether it is sin or cos i could use it because i could look at that and i'm going to use the block there just as an easy way of just explaining where it comes from so the cos double angle identity, cos 2 times block is equal to 2 cos squared block minus 1. What I'm going to try and do is get that cos block on its own. I'm going to try and isolate it. So I'm going to transpose the 1, the negative 1, and divide by 2 on both sides. Then I am left with cos squared block equal to cos 2 times block plus 1 over 2. Now I have seen them ask this as kind of a, an insight question in exams. So those of you that are looking at 80s and 90s and above, you can be asked this. 
Then, to get rid of the square, I square root both sides, leaving me with cos of block equal to cos 2 times block plus 1 over 2. Now, why do I put the block there? Well, let's do this. Let's replace every block with 18. Because if I replace every block now with 18, in my final answer, I have cos 2 times by 18. Oh, but Sorrel, that is cos 36. I know what cos 36 is. Yes. So in other words, cos of 18 is actually just p plus 1 over 2. Oh my goodness, this is some magic I'm doing here. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm. Go and watch this slide again and see the magic as it happens. And you can do this with any half angles, okay? But it really is some interesting mathematics that's happening. Now let's look at the last question. This is now a weird little question. So I'm going to again follow my steps. Get my, are my angles between 0 and 360? Nope. Because of negative 156. So I'm going to add 360 and just copy over the rest. Okay. I love to do it step by step so I don't get confused about where I am in the sum. Then I want to go and get my angles between 0 and 90. So I'm going to look at each of them, reducing them by looking in which quadrant they are. So the first one is negative sin 24 degrees. The second one is negative cos of 12. The third one is negative cos of 24. And the last one is fine. I'm not going to worry about it. Now here comes the important part. Once my angles are between 0 and 90, I now start looking for angles that are the same. So the 24 and the 24 is fine. But the 12 and the 78 is not the same. But I can get them the same because they add up to 90. So in other words, I am going to change that cos or that yeah, the cos 78 into sin of 12. Okay? I hope that I'm, you are with me. I'm just trying to get the angles the same. Remember my steps if I've got without a calculator. Special angles, get my angles the same. Now this is a compound angle identity. But to make it a bit more e or a bit easier to understand, I'm just going to place colors in. So in other words, I'm making the alpha green and the beta orange. So in other words, the 24 is in green and the beta is orange. So if I look at combining this, I'm sitting with sin 24 plus 12. I hope that you see that. Because sin cos, cos sin is a sin compound angle. And the sign remains the same. So this is actually just sin 36. But wait, that's 36. I've got a triangle for 36, which means this is just root 1 minus p squared. Woo! This is beautiful. Oh, this maths, man, it makes me excited. This was such a fun video to make. Ladies and gents, please, 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 those first two steps are Crucial, ladies and gents. Crucial, crucial, crucial. I cannot tell you how crucial they are. So please, get your angles between 0 and 360. Get your angles between 0 and 90. Make sure you don't make sign errors, meaning pluses and negatives and those things. Because a lot of times, let's not say a lot of times, but in this sum, 
if you, for instance, didn't have that as being negative cos 24, it actually wouldn't end up here to be a minus, which means my sign would end up to be 12 degrees, which now you're sitting with a big issue. You see how important the first two steps are. So please make sure you get them right. This is Sara van Grenen, aka Mr. VG, signing out. Have a beautiful evening. Stay safe, stay warm, and look after yourself. Remember, it's four months from July, August, September, October. It's four months to push hard. Then you are done. So make sure you leave no regrets. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Keep well.